Amen. Remain standing. Brother Hazen is going to come and read Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. seated. <clears throat> it's interesting, we're in this chapter in our Sunday school hour, amen, and uh, this chapter is a wealth, a wealth, a wealth of, uh, a wealth of uh, scripture truth, amen, and um, it, it's interesting, I need to make the connection to you, and we'll go to another verse in Proverbs uh, in a minute, um, you got to remember that just because you got a chapter marking that you don't disconnect from certain thoughts uh, from a previous chapter. The tendency is to do that. You see a chapter marking and bang, all of a sudden your, your thought process, it's like you've released this memory in the ram, so to speak, <laughs> in your mind. And then you go on, and then next thing you know it, don't forget what you read in chapter 5. So one of the things that chapter 5 talks about is that um, in chapter 5, of course, it talks about marriage. We're not going to get into that in detail. We're going to stick to the passages that I have here on training up, uh, train up and bring up your kids. But at the same time, in order to accomplish anything in chapter 5, the key verse is Ephesians 5.18. Look over there. Do you see that? But, watch this. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but what? But be filled with the Spirit. In order you, for you to accomplish what's in this chapter, and in the next chapter, is you must be filled with the Spirit. Are you walking after the Spirit and not after the flesh? Are you filled with the Holy Spirit of God? you got to understand there's a difference between the indwelling Spirit of God for those who know Christ. That's a permanent indwelling. But the fact is that what are you filled with in your life? If it's not the Holy Spirit, then it's something else. God says, be filled. As I mentioned earlier, um, just what we read in the 10 o'clock Sunday school, these verses are commands. They're not suggestions. They're not optional. It's not, no, you don't have to do this. No, these are commands of God. Be filled with the Spirit. As wrong as it is for a believer to be drunk with wine, the Bible says that it is wrong for a believer for them to not be filled with the Spirit of God. So we got to understand that truth. And it's so, so important. Let's not ignore that. Amen? And uh, so... In the passage Brother Hazen read here, in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 4, is a, just a foundational passage when it comes to parents and children. Parents and children. As many of you know, I believe next Sunday is what? Father's Day weekend. Is that right? And uh, that's that special weekend that the world recognizes fathers. Not wrong, not bad. At the same time, uh, we don't have to wait for Father's Day. We don't have to wait for Mother's Day to appreciate our parents, do we? Amen? I, I believe the Bible teaches in the verse 2 that Brother Hazen read, honor, honor. What's honor? It's respect. You know what, uh, parents? Your, your children ought to honor you. 
They ought to honor you. The Bible says that's a command, and you say they're not honoring me. You better make them honor you. You better call them into accountability for their lack of honor if that's what's going on. You need to do that. So just as much as it is for children to honor their parents, the parents have to realize that if God told them to honor you, you need to hold them to an account of that. Are they honoring you? And if they're not, you need to make some adjustments and corrections in in their lifestyle. They're they're young. You start when you're young and you as they grow. And as they show how can I say it, responsibility, and they're accountable, you give them more leeway, you kind of loosen things up. It's not in standards and, 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 and boundaries, but in the sense of you give them more trust. But when that trust, amen, is broken, they have to start over again. Amen? And so this is all a process of learning. They got to learn that. If you don't do that, they're going to find out some things in the workplace when they don't follow the guidelines, policies of a business that are clearly written and given, and usually in a handout or sent to you now through email in a business. You better better read those things. Oh, look at all that stuff, you know. You better read that stuff because you may not know. You might find out something's going to happen to you if you don't follow some of those things. Amen? So, But we're not here to give you a bunch of rules and stuff. We got the Bible here right now. So we're talking about the Bible in this. Now, sometimes we need to have policies, and we need to have these things even in the church, amen? And we got to clarify some things for the church's sake and for the testimony's sake of the church, amen? But here, God's very clear. Children, obey your parents, verse 1. That's, that's action, action, amen? So let's speak to the kids before I, I get to mom and dad, okay? Children, you need to act immediately when mom and dad tell you to do something, Immediately, no talking back, no lip, amen? As you've heard me say before, uh, our pastor in Niagara Falls years ago, Pastor Cunningham, and uh, in Niagara Falls, he had an aunt, and his aunt, when he was a little boy, two or three years old, and his aunt was really, boy, I tell you, she put some boundaries in place, and he would have a, a habit of talking back when he was given clear instructions, and she would say, Stop right there. No argument, no discussion. Just do it. Amen? That's, that's men in the military. You don't, Just say, I don't like my parents at home. They're telling me all this stuff. I'm going to join the army. <laughs> really? Really? Good luck. <laughs> you, you would be in big trouble. <laughs> you don't talk back. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No argument, no discussion. You got to do it. You sign some papers and you're on the hook for that. Amen. You better do it. You better watch, you know, have a good spirit about it. So kids, obey. What what, what does mom and dad, well, I don't see that rule in the Bible. That's all right. They can have rules as long as they don't contradict the Bible. Like clean up your bed. Pick up your clothes. (laughs) Amen. Amen. Uh Uh-oh, they're getting, amen. I'm starting some trouble here amongst the parents and kids here. Amen. (laughs) Amen. It's all good. It's practice, training. It's all teaching. Amen. Giving you some things, some, uh, it's, it's, it's formulating your character, helping you and biblically based. Amen. So, so important. So obey your parents. Okay. In the Lord for this is right. God says, this is the right thing to do. Say, I want to do the right thing. Children, teenagers, I want to do the right thing. Amen. There you go. There's one. How about that one? Work on that one for a while. Well, I want to, you know, I want to do this and this and this and all the church and all that. How's it at home, kids? How's everything going at home with you and your parents? Have you got that one sorted out yet? I want to do all these other things. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why don't you do what you know you should do first and get that one into control? Amen. Amen. Obey your parents. It's right. It's right. This is right. Parents, what's that? Mom and dad. Both of them. Let me help you out, mom and dad. You two better get on board with each other. If you don't, they'll pick sides. Who's easier on me? Yeah, mom is. Who's easier? Well, maybe dad's on this one, on this issue. Dad will let me have this, but I know mom won't. Or, and 
Come on now. That's Isaac and Rebecca in Old Testament. Favorites. Not good. You're having problems. You're having problems. Obey your parents in the Lord. So you say, wait a minute. So some kids, they won't go to one. They'll go to the other to ask for something. You better be working together. Amen. And if things are not in line with each other, you better have a private husband and wife powwow meeting. And get it right and be on the same page so they don't play that game because you're both responsible to God of your account of what listen we're stewards wait I got the money I got that one down we're on wonderful how about your kids they're not yours they're God's they're a gift from God God you give an account for your kids amen it's 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 so anyway we got to deal with that so then, verse 2, honor thy father and thy mother. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. So the Bible says, honor, that's that respect. We've already mentioned some of that. Amen? Respect. So, so important. So, so important. We'll get to the parents and the fathers here in a minute. They obeyed, but they were stomping their feet. They were blah, blah, talking under their breath. Blah, 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 blah. They were doing all that kind of stuff. They dishonored you. They dishonored you. They disrespected you. They shouldn't have said anything. They still disobeyed God. Not just you, but God. God says, obey your parents. Take care of that one. Action. Number two, honor your father and your mother. What's that? Attitude. Attitude. What kind of attitude do you have? See, we got this idea, well, they, they, they accomplished it, but they were stomping their feet. They were throwing things around. They were angry. They were pulling fits. They were doing all this, but they did it. They disobeyed God, and they disobeyed you because they did it with a rotten attitude. That's dishonoring. Amen. It's dishonoring. You know what? Parents, we'll get to you in a minute. Hang on. Amen. You think, well, we're going to get to the parents. You're picking on the kids right now. Verse 3, that it may be well with thee. Hey, kids, you want it to be well with you? Isn't the Bible true? God's word is true. I want it to be well with me. You better take care of verse 1, and you better take care of verse 2. I want, I want it to be well with me. How's uh, verse 1 coming? How's verse 2 coming? I, I Listen, I know this. In a home... When I was raising my kids, I had to deal with this constantly. Constantly. And now, they're married, and they're saying, now I know what you went through, Dad. Now I know what you went through, Mom. I'm dealing with now with their kids, which are our grandkids. How about that? Now you know. I understand. So now your kids may end up in the same place you were where you didn't understand. I don't know why I have to do that. My parents were telling me to do this, and I don't know if I really have to do that, you know. And if they could just trust mom and dad. Amen? So, and then he says that it may be well with thee that thou mayest live long on the earth. You want a long life on planet earth? Better get it together. God wants you to get it together. Amen? And then he says here, um, in uh, verse 4, and here's the verse, besides, of course, verse 1, verse 2, but here we kind of, God zeroes in onto the fathers. Guys, you're a father. Amen. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. Hmm. And bring them up in the nurture and admission of the Lord. Whoa. Okay. Keep your place there. Don't lose Ephesians 6. Go to Proverbs 22, 6. And we'll come back here, okay? We just got to do a little back and forth. There's two places in the Bible. God gives us some clear instructions. We're supposed to bring up our children. Amen? Bring them up to a level that God wants them. Where God wants... You know what? It's a constant bringing up. Come on, we got to work on that now, son. Got to work on that, daughter. We got to work on that some more. Bring you up to where? Where God wants them to be. And hopefully that's where you want them to be. Amen? Hopefully you and God. And again, parents, if you're not in line with the Lord, you're going to have problems. You know, we want them to respect us, but we don't respect God. 
That's not a statement that they have a license never to honor and obey. No, they need to do that unconditionally. Just like in Ephesians 5, it talks about the husband and the wife, and those commands there are unconditional. Unconditional commands. So are these commands. So you about to get it together. Amen? You, you know, say, I, I don't get the respect. Are you respectable? Amen. Some people don't understand that principle. Are you respectable? Some people aren't. Now, I'm not, again, that's not a statement to, to say, well, yeah, the kids, they can get away with murder. No, of course not. They need to respect. They need to honor. They need to obey. But you better hold them to the task. Amen. You have a great responsibility. So in Proverbs chapter 22, you're there waiting on me, and I'll get there. Don't worry. Amen. Proverbs chapter 22. Again, I'm going to read this verse, and I'm going to read it the way most people interpret it. How's that? I, I pay attention to every word. As I mentioned at 10 o'clock, every word of God is pure. He's a shield on them to put their trust in. Add down none of his words. Let's reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. I don't want to add anything or take anything away from God's word. It's true, as it is, okay? Now watch. Here's how I'll read it the way people, the average believer interprets this verse. Train up, a, train up a child in the way he will go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Is that what the verse says? It says the way they should go, not will go. This is not a robotic, automatic, uh, you know, you're, you have no, they have no will, <laughs> amen, no heart, no will, but they'll be a, a, like a zombie just going along and doing everything just perfect, dotting all the, the I's and crossing all the T's in the Bible. That doesn't happen. We're all sinners. Hopefully today you're saved by grace. You still got the flesh to deal with even though the spirit and the soul are secure in Jesus Christ, and you're waiting for that new body someday. Amen? The Bible does not say train up a child in the way they will go. It says in the way they should go. Where should they go? So, let's, you know, some people, I've, I've been involved in ministry now for quite some time, and I've seen children come from the most terrible, terrible circumstances. Let's apply the verse. So those kids who have been told, and if they're living in a situation, sad situation, I've been in homes with drugs. I've been in homes with all kinds of sinful, wicked practices going on with kids in, in, in different ministries and all the years that I've been saved. So therefore, it's, therefore, since the parents have trained them in those wicked lifestyles, then they will be in that path forever. Is that a true statement? No, they can be saved. <laughs> Aren't you glad for that? They can be salvaged. Amen? So, but some parents get a little bit of pride issue, or they beat themselves forever. Listen, if this is not a statement to relieve a parent of their responsibility of raising their children and being engaged with them. If you're not engaged with your kids, don't be surprised where they end up. You know your own heart. You know your own heart, mom and dad. I don't know your heart. Is your heart to love your kids and to guide them and direct them in the ways of God? Is that your desire? I hope it is. Because if it is, you've got to spend some time with them. And if you don't, don't be shocked or surprised if you don't. Or if, if, if they go off and end up in a lifestyle that you say, man, I never taught them, I never... But did you spend time with them? We're living in a world that we're getting inundated by all the stuff. I mean, through all the media, entertainment, music, electronic devices, everything's being thrown at us. And if you're not careful, you will ignore your kids from the time they're this high to the time they're teenagers. And say, where did it all go? Where'd it go? Amen. He was just like, what happened? What happened? What did I miss? What did I miss? You better spend time with them. As I mentioned last week, I mentioned, a I, 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 I gave you a statement. You go lose a job, or, or you, you, know, you, you quit a job and you go somewhere, something happens, you lose your job, okay? 
The company you left will probably rehire somebody. Don't ever feel your get all puffed up and say, oh, they'll never replace me. Really? That's a statement of pride. We think we're irreplaceable. I left the company, as I mentioned last week or the week before. They replaced me. I'm replaceable in the workplace. I'm not holding the company together. Oh, the company's going to fall apart now that I'm gone. Really? Company didn't fall apart, but they did shut down the operations a couple of years after. It had nothing to do with me leaving. Just the American company said, we've got to pull the plug on this. Uh, we're spending too much money, and uh, we're going to devote our resources in the American uh, manufacturing in Cleveland. That's all. It's as simple as that. Cut back. How about that? But we, th you know, we think that sometimes about ourselves. But in a parent, as I mentioned about the death, the death of, uh, of a brother, Brother Brian, you know, it's hard. It's hard. Amen? You lose a, a, a spouse. You lose a child. You lose a parent. Listen, yes, so maybe people come alongside and try to replace them, but they never can per really replace them. Never. That's where God comes in, and you better have a good relationship with God. Amen? Is he not your father? Is he not your father? Amen? God is your father if you're saved. Amen? So there's people that they don't even know who their father is. Did you know that? Biologically, in our society. Do you know what? You say, man, I wish they had that image with the father at home. I, I do too, but sometimes that doesn't happen. And you know what? But we got God the Father. He loves you. Maybe you didn't have an earthly father that cared for you and loved you and took care of you. Amen? But you have God looking after you, and you got to show them that. By the way, that's one reason why sometimes we have a bit of a problem in trying to reach kids, whether it be in the home or outside the home and trying to reach children. It's because they don't see the picture of the bride, that's the wife, and the bridegroom, that's supposed to be the husband, in the home that loves his wife is a picture of God's love for the church. You don't see that as much. We ought to be displaying that image all the time in our marriages, in our homes. Kids ought to see that. They ought to see that, that relationship between Christ and the church, and it should be in action between a husband and a wife. That's what God wants. Amen? But again, with all that said, no one, listen, you've lost your father. No, listen, I've, my mom and dad are gone. They're in heaven. The older you get, the, 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 the ranks thin down. I remember talking to one of our senior saints not too long ago. They were just saying, man, I'll tell you, my peer group, they're, they're, most of them are dead now. If the Lord tarries, that comes for some of us. The people that we were close to, we went to school with, went to Bible school or grew up with, went to any school together. They get thinned out a bit as you get older. This one's gone, this one's gone, this one's gone, this one's gone. That's why you try to reach outside your peer group. That's why it's important for kids to reach outside their peer group. I'm not against kids getting with kids, having programs for kids, even as I might have mentioned, alluded to some of that in Sunday school. But you know what? It's important they reach outside their peer group. They need to interact with some adults. They need to go up and down. They need, they, they need that. They need that. Amen. They need that. So the Bible says here in that verse, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So we know this, there's a heart and a will in every child. Amen? There's a heart and a will. Where's that heart? Where's that will? You can help them with that. So let's not be on one extreme or the other. Let's not have it so that the kids turn out the way we thought they should turn out. And we're saying, look at my kids, wow. In a sense, I'm so great because look at the job I did. Or the other extreme is you're not engaging with them at all. You're not training them. You're not spending time. You're not bringing them up. You're not training them up. Both are wrong. I find the Bible is always in the middle in a balance. Someone says, oh, that's a compromise position in the middle. That's not a compromise position. I just find people, there's two ditches in the road. When you go down a road in the back roads, there's a ditch on each side. And I, I found Christ, people and believe, believers have a tendency to do this. They go in one ditch or the other. They can't stay where God wants them to be. 
the Bible. It's what God wants. Stay on the road. <laughs> Stay in the book. <laughs> in other words, you end up in a ditch somewhere. Because you know what? There's so much stuff on the internet that will lead you this way and this way. And if you're not grounded in the book, you'll be easily persuaded. And you'll start, oh yeah, that sounds good. Oh, that, You'll be going every which way. That's a picture of instability. Do you know the truth? Amen. I hope you do. Got a, a copy of it in your hands. Amen. So this verse here, again, train up a child. A child needs training. Amen. So as we see in the Ephesians 6 passage, it mentions parents, but it also mentions the father. You dads. The father. Amen. So he says, train up a child in the way he should go. You don't just let them go and say, well, you know, we'll let them find things out, you know, and they'll just figure things out on their own. No, they need some guidance. Someone's got to guide them. If you don't influence them for God and for right, the world will influence them for evil and sin and wickedness. What's it going to be? You better, you better, you better, you better be on, on board with that. Amen? You better, you better be understanding of that. Amen? And now, we know kids have a personality, but no personality condones any kind of sin. So if you say, oh, that's a personality, and what you're describing is sinful in the Bible, that's, not a, that's, that's, that's a bigger problem. That's a sin problem. Amen? Some people think that sometimes they blame it on their personality. Really? In other words, it's not my fault. Amen? Listen, you all, we all got a sin nature. We all do. So anyway, the book of Proverbs, it expresses the importance of the way. What is the way? It's this way, the Bible way. It's God's way. Anything else is not God's way. So that means we need, parents need to know the way. What is the way? I'm having challenges in marriage and with the kids and guiding and direct them. You better spend more time in the Word of God and less on all the electronics. If you don't do that, you're not going to show them the way. You not only should teach them the way, you should show them the way by being engaged in the way. In other words, you tell them and you lead them. That means you're up front and they're following because you're in the path and you're doing it in front of them. They need to see you do it. It's not about show, mom and dad. Did they ever see you pray? Did they ever catch you praying or in the word? If they don't, we got a problem. They need to see that. My dad tells me always to pray. My mom tells me always I need to pray and read the Bible. But I never see him read, or read the Bible and pray. We're not secret service agents in, in the ministry of Jesus Christ. And we're not doing it for show either. But you ought to be able to do this. And you say, okay, now I'm doing Bible time. You get your Bible out. You get a Bible. You help them through that. You have a devotion. You teach them. You train them. You're supposed to be training them up and bringing them up. That takes time. Well, I'm so busy. Then you're too busy if that's your excuse. I'm too busy. You better cut some things out before you lose them. You need to spend time with your kids in the Word of God. Amen? Listen, I thank God for Brother Hazen, Brother Don, but it's, it's not the Sunday school teacher's job to do the training and bringing up of your kids. This should complement what should be already going on in your home, under your roof. And if it's not, you got a problem. And listen, it's especially important if you've got your kids in public education. Because what's happening, I see in my studies and what I see through different situations, is that there's things being done and said that are tearing down those childs, that simple childlike faith in those kids. Tearing it down. And it's in a done in a subtle way. So that means you need to do more engagement with your children. More than ever. That's where the Bible talks about Ecclesiastes. A threefold cord is not easily broken. See, when you got what's going on in, outside of the home and the educational system and what's going on in the home and you're in a Bible-believing church, all these three areas should be in unison together, working together. Wherever they go, they're being in full godly influences constantly, godly influences constantly. And sometimes we allow ungodly influences in our home, and it's like that thing in Amos where the guy, he ran away from the bear and the lion. He leans his hand upon the wall, and he gets bit by a serpent. It happened in the home. 
Because my kids aren't in this thing, and they're, they're involved with that, and they're not involved with that sin. But what are we letting in the home through the electronics? We're, we're actually letting the serpent in. The serpent. The serpent. He'll bite them. He'll bite them. He'll get them. That's what the Bible says in 20, Joshua 24, 15. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, Joshua said. So you better step up to the plate and take responsibility, guys. Hey Amen. We're going to have a little vote here. It's not a democracy. Home is not a democracy where, how do you feel, son? How do you feel, daughter, about this? How do you feel about that church? You really want to go to that church? No, you make the decision. You make that decision. You don't ask your kids, well, where do you feel like going? Are you the parent or not? Who's leading here? I know some people don't, kids don't, some of your kids now, see, they probably don't like me too much anymore, but <laughs> I'm in trouble with you. It's not a vote. Men, be a man. Stand up. Learn the book. Make some decisions. Be accountable if they're wrong. You mess up, get it right. Tell your kids, tell your wife, say, I messed up. I shouldn't have done that. That was a bad decision. Eat humble pie. Don't stay in your pride and say, I was right, you're wrong. Really? Amen. We need that. We need that kind of leadership. If we're going to see our kids, it's tough. I'm not saying, listen, things have changed since my kids, when I raised them, and it's that much tougher. So I understand that dynamic. But is not the Bible enough still? What else do we need? What else do we need? You say, well, the Bible doesn't work. No, it's because you're not working the Bible. The Bible works. Either, either you don't understand what it says. I hope that's not the problem, but that's possible. The other issue is you're not applying it, as the Bible says. You can't, you can't look at God and say, God, this book don't work, really. Where do we get that idea from? It works. Just obey the scriptures, mom and dad, and that'll help you out in dealing with the kids. Amen. Back to Ephesians 6. We've got to finish this portion. We've got to wrap up here. Amen. We'll get to the notes here sooner or later. So, so in this passage, in Ephesians 6, I've already mentioned to you, it says in verse 1, your parents. So inclusive, mom and dad, team, you're a team. By the way, a good illustration of a team is a yoke of oxen. Are you yoked up together? Come on, you got to work on that. Well, we have some differences. Work on those privately. Don't fight and argue in front of your kids. Deal with stuff. Like I said, if the kids see you doing that, they're going to say, whoa, I know which one to go to ask next time. Amen. Work together. We've already covered that. Verse 2, honor thy father and mother. So children, obey your parents. Honor your father and mother. And ye fathers. Now it deals with dads. Your dad, here you go. Some, some, some say, well, the translation says that it should be the parents again. It says fathers. It says fathers there. Can we accept that or what? Some people are so weak, they don't want to accept the responsibility. It says fathers there. That's what the translation says. Fathers, provoke not your children to wrath and bring them up to nurture and admonition of the Lord. You know what? You have an opportunity, Dad, to provoke your kids. And unfortunately, to wrath, not to love. You know, there's a verse in Hebrews 10, 24, and 25. It says, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to what? Good works. Instead of to wrath... So, how does that work, guys? This, this is how it works. You've just lost it, maybe. You saw some stuff. You just flipped your lid. The Bible tells us this. There's a verse in Proverbs. It says that, you know, you want to go and correct your kids, but you're doing it, and you've lost control of yourself. He says, your, whatever correction you're trying to do is going to fail. You're going to fail in that. Because you've got to get a grip on yourself. So well, that's the way I was, I was treated when I was a kid with people, parents just screaming and yelling at me. That's how it got the done. Really? It's not a home. That's not how the home should be. A home should be a place of refuge for your kids and you and your spouse. It should be a place you may just love my home. 
You know, I love being with my wife and my husband or my kids. And Amen. It ought to be that kind of place. I mean, I just like being home. Amen. I mean, some of us had to spend more time the last couple of years in the home out of the mandates and rules and all that. Amen. I, you know what? And you say, well, that wasn't good. And you, know, you lost your friends. How about this? Maybe there was a positive side. I hope you did some stuff in the home. God gave you a little bit of a break there off and on. What did you do with it? Again, I'm not going to preach the message I preached a month, a couple of months ago, but the electronics are becoming surrogate parents in our homes. Here you go. Stop bothering me. Here you go. Here, do that. Click, click. Come on. Surrogate. The electronics is surrogate parents in our modern society. That's where we're at. Why don't you spend some time? Why don't you go for a walk? Why don't you all get in a car? Okay, it's going to cost something in gas. Okay, find a park nearby. Go play with them. Take some pictures of them. Everybody's got a camera in their pocket. Amen. Do something with it. Spend time with them. You don't have to spend a lot of money. He says it's costing so much. For I understand. We're all in that boat. Just use your money wisely. Ask God, help me to be a good steward, Lord. It's getting a little tight down here. God will help you with that. Maybe you need to cut some things out that aren't necessary. It's easy to sign up for 20 subscriptions, you know. It doesn't take much. Click, oh, man, how did I get that one? Man, I ever signed up for that on Google Play or Apple. Wow, I, was, I just barely touched it, and it already signed me up. Or, you know, it's for free for 30 days or 60 days or 90 days, and next thing you know, you forget about the time where they're going to bill you again, and all of a sudden, where does that charge come from on the card? Man, we got subscriptions. That's how they make money out there. I'm not against all that stuff. I have some of that. But be wise. Be wise. Be a good steward of what God's blessed you with. Is it absolutely necessary, or is it a replacement for you doing your job? Amen. Shouldn't be a replacement. You're a parent. You, there's nothing, no one will ever replace you. Thank God for godly grandparents. If they lost a son or a daughter and they got to raise their grandkids. Thank God for that. Amen. And great grandparents. But listen, you're important to your children. You're very important. Be in your place doing what God wants you to do. The Bible is very clear on that. Let's be reasonable. Let me give you some quick reasons. I know the 12th, the midnight hour, no, lunchtime, the stomach. Some ways fathers provoke their children to wrath. I've already mentioned one of them, favoritism. You want to provoke your kids to wrath? Have a favorite. Take a son or a daughter, make them your favorite. You'll, you'll have problems, I guarantee you. Prefer them, lean on them. Be harder on the others and soft on that one. Yeah, uh-huh. We'll see how that goes in time. Number two, fathers, you don't want to provoke, I hope you don't want to provoke your children to wrath. Number two, another way you provoke your children to wrath is you don't listen to them. Don't bother me right now. I'm just too busy. Uh, get away from me. I'll talk later. Get, move away. Get away. I've had enough. Enough. Stop bothering me. Here. Here's, the, here's my cell phone. Just go. 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 Play that game. That's what it is. Come on. Just don't bother me. I'm too busy. Yeah, you're busy playing your game. We're wasting our lives here. You could be diligently teaching them Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 through 6. What are you doing? Not listening. And you know what? Number three, we need to punish bad behavior. There needs to be some kind of form of correction. But you know what the opposite of that is? Not rewarding good behavior. Oh, we'll correct while we're on them. But you never say, I love you. Thank you, that was good. Thank you for doing that. I love you. Amen. You got to reward good behavior. 
I don't know how you guys are, but this next one is a challenge for some of our men. In our modern North American society, I can't speak for other countries around the world because we got folks here from different countries, but I know this as a fact. Number four, failing to show affection. I said, I love you. Can, can you say those words? You really struggle with that. So you, listen, my dad's in heaven. I love him. But I don't remember my dad ever saying, I love you. I don't hate my dad for that, but I didn't use that as an excuse to say to my kids, I'm never going to say I love them because they, my dad never said, I love you. I don't remember at all, not one time. But I loved my dad. My dad would bring things up in the past. I said, Dad, that's B.C. What does that mean? Before Christ, before you got saved. B.C., Dad, it's under the blood. It's under the blood. God, I love you. I thank God for you. I didn't use you as my excuse not to serve God and not to, and not to train my kids. Dad, I don't want to repeat that pattern in the next generation and the next one and the next one and the next one. Like some families. I see that all the time. Continual generations down the same path. Say, when is this going to change? Failing to show affection verbally and physically. Physically meaning a hug. I got to define, lest someone misunderstand. Being appropriate. Amen? Being godly. But saying it and saying, I love you. I love you, son. When my son sees me, he'll give me a hug and mend with. I'm either getting weaker or he's getting stronger. They, he can really squeeze. He <sighs> said, I love you, Dad. That touches my heart. I love you, Dad. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Amen? That's good. I love him too. I love all my kids. Amen? That's the physical. That's the hug. And verbally saying it. Not just saying, I love you. I love you. Show it. Show it. Here's another way. I know, we've got to keep on moving here. <laughs> Why fathers provoke their children to wrath? Favoritism. Not listening to them. Not rewarding good behavior. Failing to show affection. Number five, not laying down boundaries or standards. You've already heard me if you were in the 10 o'clock. God put down boundaries in the garden. I don't believe in boundaries at all. Just let them do whatever they want then you don't agree with God. God put boundaries. He put boundaries all through the Bible in the Old Testament. I don't like this thing about, well, that's so legalistic. Really? You don't believe the Bible. That word, that's so abused, legalism, legalism. You ever study that in that whole situation? Read the book of Galatians. It's adding to salvation that's not part of salvation. It's saying you're not saved unless you do this, 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 this. Salvation is by grace through faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. End of story. No works at all. After you're saved, yes, there be, ought to be an outworking of the works and, and walking after the Spirit, not after the flesh. But people pull out that legalism. It's called legalism, legalism, legalism. Like, wow, we've really abused that. Everything's legal. You make a rule and you call it legalism. You ought to have rules in your home. It's not legalism. Don't be afraid to do that. You've got to lay down some boundaries. All right, do you got any boundaries? Do the kids know their boundaries? You say, well, I don't want to go and write a list. Maybe you need to. I don't know, but maybe you need to. What are these? Boundaries. Oh, yeah, there's history in there, but there's boundaries. Ephesians 6, 1 through 4 is boundaries. Here's your boundaries, parents. Here's your boundaries, kids. Here's some rules. Here's what you got to do. You want to please God? Number six, why fathers provoke, ways fathers provoke their children to wrath. Neglect. As I've already mentioned, I've beat that one already. Not engaging or spending time with your kids. Not engaged. And again, you better get your priorities and your time, and you better redeem the time. You better do something, you better make some changes. You got to make time, spend time, engage with them, talk to them, do things with them, play with them, play games. Amen. 
Go for hikes. Go for walks. Do stuff like that. Engage, engage, engage. And last of all, but not least, and there's probably more than I could ever mention, and we've got to stop here, is correction. You mean to say you shouldn't? No, don't misunderstand. Don't jump to conclusions. Under the word correction, there's three problems. I've already mentioned one of them. You do it in anger. You know what? If your kid, your child did something wrong, you better send him to the room, and you better get a grip on yourself before you go in there, before you correct them, before you deal with them, before you discipline them. You better get a grip on that. Anger, you're, you're, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. God says that. You'll fail. You'll fail. That will fail. That's a surefire method, method of failing in your training up and bringing up your kids. The other one is this. There's no correction at all. You either do it in anger or you don't do it at all. They're both wrong. They're both wrong. You need to do it. Listen, you... In other words, you're, it's, there's no balance in what you're doing. It's one extreme or the other. The ditch over here and the ditch over there, and you can't follow the Bible balance or don't want to follow it. It's there if you want it. You just got to apply it. Listen. I'll read this one thing. There's so many things. I mean, it's just. Oh. <clears throat> there was a leaflet years ago that was put out by the Houston Police Department many years ago. The title of the leaflet was this, How to Ruin Your Children. That was the title of the leaflet. And it was guaranteed to be 99% effective. In part, this is what it said. Are you ready? Principle one, begin with infancy to give the child everything they want. That's one of those surefire ways of, of losing your kids. Give them everything they want. You know, Adonijah, the Bible says, David never displeased him. Did you know that? He never said no to his son. Never, never. He gave him everything he wanted. We know what happened there. Amen, it'll ruin him. This is secular Houston Police Department. I don't know what year it was. Principle two. Some parents do this, unfortunately, even in homes, Christian homes. Principle two. When they pick up bad words, laugh at them. Laugh at it. Just think, oh, that's funny. Really? There's nothing funny. And hopefully they didn't get it from all the electronics they're engaging in. So I never use that. And your spouse, your husband, wife, we never use those words. We never use those words. If you are using those words, then you're part of the problem. You lose your cool and you use language that's not appropriate, you're part of the problem. Principle three, Houston Police Department. Never give them any spiritual training. Let them wait until they're 21 years old and let them decide for themselves. That's how some parents, I talk to some parents out there and they say, no, we never tell our kids, you know, what the religion, you know, we stay away from religion and this thing about God, we'll let them make up their own mind. Uh, did you make them eat your meal? In some cases they'd say, no, I didn't force them on that one either. But in most homes they'd say, yes, we did. You make them go to school? Yes, we did. And no, you go down this whole list. Yes, we make them do that. We make them do that. We make them, we make them, we wake them. But on that one, we don't do that one. Really? Hmm. Principle four, they said in the police department of Houston. Avoid using the word wrong. It may develop into a serious guilt complex. No, they need to know what is right and what is wrong. They say, okay, if you want to, you want to say, we'll never use the word wrong around this house, okay? It's never wrong. You're headed for trouble. Are you ready for the last one? This is a shortened version of the longer list, which I don't have a copy of. I have the shortened version. Last of all, 
pick up everything they leave lying around so they will be experienced in throwing responsibility on everybody else. Pick up after him all the time, and they'll get so used to it that they'll rely on everybody else to do stuff like that for them. You're, you're, you're heading down a wrong path. Police, Houston Police Department, not church. 99% effective, they said. I would agree with that. If not 100%, you're guaranteed to ruin your kids. That's just a sample, a small sample. Listen, my prayer, my prayer, I hope and pray for you as a family, as parents, and raising your kids, that you would follow the Scriptures. You would be consistent in the Scriptures, consistent in correction, consistent in your prayer, consistent in the Bible, consistent in church. You say, oh, church is important. How important is it to you? How important is it to you? Consistent in these areas in your life. Amen? And before you start thinking about other people, look in the mirror. Look at yourself. Well, I know someone, and I know this one, and I know that. You're not accountable to them. You are accountable to God. Amen. Let's all stand. We'll close in prayer. Father, help us. Help us today. Help us today, Lord God. We need your help. We need your strength. Lord God, with, as parents, as family members, as God, we just, Lord, we do live in troublesome times. They are here. We know that. But we know that it's not impossible to obey your word and to follow your word and to trust in your word and to apply your word. Oh, God, help us today. Help every father, every mother, every son every daughter. God, we need you today. We need you today, each and every day. Oh, God, we know strong marriages and strong homes build strong churches, build strong countries. Oh, God, and we know the devil is at attack. Lord God, in the Christian homes and the homes where Christ is not prominent and centered, Lord God, Help us, help us today. Meet with each and every need. Thank you for these people. God bless as we prepare to go home. Lord, my heart is especially heavy for those who might not know you as Savior. Help them not to defer, to put things off, but, Lord God, to act upon the truth of your word concerning their soul. Help them realize today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, not next week, but right now. Oh God, we need you today. God, as we prepare to leave this place, give us safety. Bless our afternoon. Help us to take some of these things from your word, Lord God, and apply them this afternoon. Help us to live these truths, Lord God. We need you today. God, again, just give us safety, and may we meditate and think upon what we've heard today. May we bring honor and glory to you, and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.